Hey kids, Mr. Flyer here, hope you're well. Now, a bit of an odd one for you. This uh, video is a sort of a shorty before and after type thing to do with my street triple. Not entirely sure how this is going to turn out, but stick around, stay tuned, and I'll explain all. Okay, so a couple of weeks ago I was contacted by a fellow called Ian Owens who's a subscriber of mine and he works for, or runs, I'm not sure entirely what, a company called Prestine Detailing based up in Loughborough Way. Um, and uh, he said, uh, would I like um, my bikes detailed by him, i.e. cleaned to within an inch of the last given um, special coatings, all that sort of thing. I said to him, look, to be honest, it's a very kind offer, but uh, you know, I keep my bikes in the garage here. I keep them pretty clean. I'm a little bit anal about it, in fact. I'm not entirely sure that uh, there's too much you can do for them, but he said, Trust me, I can really make a go of these. These bikes will look much better once I've had them. So my interest was piqued and not wanting to look a gift horse in the mouth. Uh, I said, yeah, why don't we do that then? So what we're going to do is in a few months time after winter and crud and stuff, I'm going to send up a couple of my bikes, probably my GS, particularly cruddy and one other, maybe my Street Twin or my Royal Enfield, uh, and get him to detail them. But in the meantime, just to give us a flavour of what he can do, he said, why don't you send up another bike in the meantime? So I'm going to send him up my Street Triple R. Now on the surface of it, this bike to me looks pretty darn good. I mean, I do I do clean my bikes religiously, as if you've watched the channel, you'll probably know. Um, so to my mind, at least, the bike looks all right. Um, now, if we look at some close-up details, there are some things that maybe could be sorted out. So for example, the wheels are a bit dusty. Uh, so yeah, I'm sure they can be cleaned. If you look under here, things like the hugger, a little bit of mud, but nothing a normal clean wouldn't get off. Um, I guess the exhaust is discolored. That's something that there's not really much I can do about. Under here, uh, where the suspension is, uh, there's some crud and stuff caught in you know, layers of, a of ACF50 that I've put in there over the years. Uh, what else is there really that can be done? If I look at closely at the, um, at the fuel tank, let me just get, let me get my light here that I use for filming. There we go. If I shine this direct on the fuel tank, you can see the sort of finish on here isn't too bad, but there's maybe, maybe one or two little flecks and maybe scratches in the paintwork there. I don't know if you can see them, possibly not around where I've got those knee protectors that could be sorted out. Uh, around the front end, uh, on the cowling here, there's just, again, it's got very light scratching in there, crazing. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that, but it's a little bit dull. Something that's annoyed me for ages is the headlight here. I don't know if you can do anything about that, but that front headlight look is um, actually fogged just on here. That's a little bit of fogging. I'm not sure whether I'll be able to do anything about that. And what else? Obviously things like the, the forks could do with a clean. I mean, actually this is as dirty as my bike gets. It could do with a clean. Things like the uh, clamps here, uh, some little tiny marks of maybe the starting of perhaps some, well actually I think they're just fly spats, actually not really corrosion. The radiator itself, uh, again, just looking, you know, as they do after this is a 2012 bike, so I've been riding it for seven years, this is how they look. Um, and then down, if we look at the downpipes at the front, I mean, look at that, I mean, it's, I'm almost ashamed to show you those, they're just absolutely disgusting, aren't they? They need a clean uh, around the inside, the engine look could do with a clean again. Stuff gunked on there from years of ACF 50 application. Um, and then underneath the belly pan and so on, the brakes, um, again, possibly could do with a bit of a clean. I've never actually cleaned them since I've had the bike, I'm ashamed to say. Uh, where else can we see where there might be some dirt lurking? Uh, gosh, a little bit of dirt on the engine there. So, you know, superficially, as I say, I think the bike is in pretty good nick. Get rid of that. Uh, but uh, as I say, Ian reckons he can make a big difference on this. So tomorrow, he's gonna turn up with the trailer, he's gonna take this bike up north for a few days, work his magic, which I think includes things like pulling off panels and stuff, um, apply some protective coating to give it a clean within an inch of his life and then bring it back. So what I'm gonna do is uh, give the bike to him tomorrow and then uh, when it comes back, we'll have another close look and see what the difference is. That's all there is to it. All right, stick around, stay tuned. Let's see what he can do with it. So, wind on a week and the bike is back uh, and it's looking absolutely amazing. Before we go into all the details about what, what's uh, been done to it, let me introduce to Ian. Hello, Hi. Ian. Oh, let's shake your hand. Thank you very much for the work you've done. It looks You're absolutely welcome. amazing. So, uh, basically, I thought it would be worth just showing you some of the things that I pointed out to you before. So, I made a little note, which I don't know where I've put it, but anyway, I think I can remember what we looked at. So, things like, uh, if you remember under here, there was an awful lot of grunge underneath the engine stuck to... Um, where the ACF 50 was, that's all sorted out now. Let me get my light again, uh, and I'll show you the finish that Ian's managed to get on the paintwork. I mean, this tank, what well, I didn't think it was too bad anyway, but now, absolutely lustrous on there, absolutely amazing. Uh, the bit of the paintwork that was really poor before was the nose. If you remember, that was all swirly. Check this out. Not a hint of a swirl. I hope you can see that okay. I'll move the camera around. It is as good as new. 
the uh, radiator. Do you remember that was all cruddy? Uh, Ian had his doubts whether he could do much with that, but actually it's come out beautifully. The wheels are looking amazing. Really pleased with that. And again, underneath the downpipes, lovely and clean. All inside the engine, which was particularly cruddy. All around where the hugger was, the chain's been cleaned, basically. It looks absolutely beautiful. So to find out exactly what was done, Ian, maybe you can uh, tell us basically what the process was and what products you used, if you don't mind, if that's not a secret. Yeah, certainly. Um, the first stage really was uh, a really deep clean of the bike. Right. So that was uh, top down, absolutely everything cleaned. So is that basically uh, so water job, you know, bucket um, and sponge lot? Yeah, yep. slow formed it, uh, started with that to get all any loose bits off uh, and then degreased it. Yep. Um, which uh, was quite a challenge, especially getting all the CF50 off. Did that Was that uh, sticky? Yeah, it was good, really good, good. So yeah. I mean, it's a good product. Yeah, it's, it is a very, very good product, but it does it does cling very, very well. So uh, stripped all of that off. Yep. Um, stripped all of the um, the gunk off the chain, um, and then from there started to dismantle uh, various parts of the bike that we would need to in order to effectively polish them. So in the case of the street trouble, there's not actually a lot to dismantle. So what, what, what came off? Um, well, what we took off, we took the seat off, yep. uh, took the rear cowls off, yep. uh, I took the uh, headlong cowl off yep. on the top and took the um, wood guard off. I uh, actually found it easier to leave the side cowls, the radiator shrouds. It was probably easier to actually leave them on uh, as much for the fact that the um, connection for the indicators is buried deep in... Oh right, it's one of those complicated yeah, affairs. So yeah. I didn't want to strip completely the bike down. Uh, took the belly pan off. Okay. Uh, and that also helped because we needed. Uh, Let's we'll have a look at that. Didn't have a look at that, did we? That uh, that was something that was pretty cruddy before. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the downpipes look much better as well. Out of interest, what do you use to clean the downpipes? Because I've heard all sorts of things about using bleach or harpic yeah. uh, and all that sort of stuff. What's your thoughts there on that? There is a lot of people that use bleach. Yeah. Uh, I've used an autosol product uh, right. to be able to get it done. Uh, started off because there was a, a lot of contamination on the downpipes. Uh, started off with a brass wire brush. Okay. So uh, that sort of loosened up a, a lot of the, the muck that was on there. And from there, it was a case of just applying it, brushing it in, rinsing it off. So, so there's no real magic shortcuts. It's elbow grease and I'll work with, um, I think, what I'm picking up here. It wasn't, it wasn't a massive amount of elbow grease. Um, it was a case of, you know, just being patient with them. Yeah, to be, yeah, able, to yeah. be able to get it, uh, get them to the stage that they're at. So, so there's some bits we were looking at earlier that you were quite pleased they come out. Do you want to point those out to us? Yeah, certainly. Just, I think the, so, um, which bits do you think did well? Yeah, I think the plastics at the at the back, which you you know have come up really, really well because they were very, very faded. Yeah, they were quite grey, uh, weren't they? So they were they were very faded, as the same as the. Uh, the yeah, the plastics around the. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, there was a lot of marks on um, on here, so I love the way you've got a cloth at hand. That yeah. shows a true detailer. Yeah, yeah excellent. So, uh, and that's just scuffs off boots. Yeah, that, that, like the that. paintwork has come up amazing, hasn't it? Yeah, so really you you, you mentioned before you're going to put a, a special coating on it. So yeah, is that going on? And what what's yes. that all about? So uh, this has been uh, treated with a two stage process. So the products are by Kamikaze, which is um, a, a Japanese make. Yeah. And the first one is called Miyabi. Right. Uh, so we apply that, then we we'll have to let it uh, cure. Uh, and from that, um, once that's fully set, cured and everything like that, we'll put another Kamikaze product over the top called Zipang. And the, uh, the Zipang has got a pretty much a self-healing sort of property in it clever stuff so if you do get any swirls you basically if it's subjected to good sunlight or heat then it will uh, almost self-heal and, and that's, that's very clever it's like those h2 paint jobs that yeah, yeah. do that aren't they yeah so, and they don't they basically don't properly set do they those paints that's how that works i don't know how yeah, it works in this case well, but uh, i mean it's, well, it does look the amazing the ceramic coating on it it is like glass it's very very tough now yeah that black has come up perfect doesn't it yeah, really it's, beautiful. It's beautiful. 
Uh, they've even coated your, um, your carbon Lovely. foot plates. Top job, top job. Well, thank you very much indeed for your efforts. Now, if uh, somebody wanted to get this done uh, with their bike, you've, uh, I think I mentioned before that you've, you've started the business to do yeah. this detailing. How do, they, how do they find you and roughly how much would this cost them? Okay, so um, the company's Pristine Detailing. We're, yep. we're based in Loughborough. Uh, we do offer a, a collection service and delivery okay. uh, once it's done. Um, the cost is very much dependent upon the amount of work that's involved. Okay. Um, this particular bike, there was a lot of work involved. Uh, there was a, a lot of work involved in the preparation because getting all the ACF 50 yep. off, getting all the grease off yep. uh, and things like that. So this one will probably come out at around about the £350 mark. Wow, okay, yep. So, but, and it may sound a lot to a lot of people, but that paintwork is it, it is and, and i have to say i'm not just saying this because ian's here but i mean obviously i've had this bike since new and i don't think the paintwork looked as good as this the day i bought it so i mean this really is amazing i don't know if the camera's picking up just how glossy that's come up now but i think that is better than the day uh, i bought it which is fantastic so um and uh website i'll put a link down below for for a website if you want to get in touch as well yeah be pristine detailing yeah. uh, perfect and uh you say you do a delivery collection is that nationwide yeah Perfect, perfect. And what sort of lead times are you looking at? If somebody phoned up tomorrow and said, or, or dropped your mail? Uh, turnaround time is normally about a week. Right, real. Uh, just depending um, how many other bikes we've got in. Fabulous. Well, thanks again, Ian. Let's get the right hand for doing that. It looks absolutely amazing. And uh, you never know, might see you uh, in a few months after winter for some of the other bikes. Not a problem. Brilliant. Well, right, I hope that's been of some interest to you. If uh, you don't fancy the hard graft, you want to get Ian and his uh, chaps involved, then uh, website down below. All right, look forward to speaking to you next time. Till then, this has been the Mist and Fly. Cheerio.